Hi, my name is Neil Kelleher. I'm doing this video in response to a request from, I think it's Hatyakala Simpson, who asked me to do a side, a side Bakasana video. And it's been a while since I've uh, practiced or taught side Bakasana, but what I hope to pass on in this video is the the understanding that there are some basic principles of balance and I go over these in a bit more detail in my in my book um, Balance Basics but even though I haven't practiced this pose I understand balance enough that I can still do it relatively easily or at least I hope I can so anyway in this video I'll go over a side because now I'll also go on a, over a variation that you can do if you're if you're limited by flexibility in such a way that you can't do the side bakasana, side bakasana position. Also show you a couple of different arm positions you can use for the regular side bakasana. And if I'm up to it, uh, I haven't warmed up yet today, we'll see if we, um, I'll try to show you how to go from bakasana into side, uh, the sideways flying splits arm balance. I think it's called Ekapada Kundinyasana too but I could be wrong on that count. But anyway, uh, just to point out uh, this, this position can be a little bit difficult on the side of the thigh because the arm is pressing into the side of the thigh. And that is one of the reasons why I don't practice it that much, but we'll see also if I can um, give you some tips. If you do experience a lot of discomfort when you're doing this pose, some techniques that may help you to alleviate that discomfort. In the regular, in my first Picasso video, I talked about the idea of rocking forwards in order for your uh, feet to lift off of the floor. Uh, as a preparation for side Picasso, an exercise I use is to kneel. You could possibly sit cross-legged if kneeling doesn't work for you. But from there to place both hands on the floor with the fingers pointing uh, perpendicular to the shins. So from the rear, it looks like this. And in this position, so right now my weight's on my legs. In this position, I'm going to shift my weight to the side, to the side that my arms are on. And as I shift my weight to the right, I'm gonna point my elbows back and reach my shoulders and chest to the right. And then I'm going to sit back up again. This is a little bit difficult on the arms and you won't actually need this much strength when you're in the side Picasso position, but just practice anyway. Notice the weight shift onto your arms so that you can get used to shifting your weight sideways relative to your legs. And what I'd suggest rather than collapsing, try to open your chest prior to moving to the right. And you could start off with your hands further away from your legs. This might be a bit easier on your arms. So slowly shift to the right. And here my weight's about even between my legs and my hands, and then shift back again. No weight on my hands. Shift to the right, weight on the hands, and then no weight. And then you can try, try it on both sides. Then try drawing the hands slightly closer in. So here, no weight on my hands, I'm gonna bend my elbows. Slowly reach my chest to the right. And here, most of my weight is on my arms, and then back again. So from the front, not much difference. So my legs are pointing straight ahead. My fingers point to the side. And so starting with the hands further away from the legs, as I reach to the, for, my, for me, the left, I'm trying to point both elbows in that direction. So my forearms and my upper arms are parallel. Again, try it with the hands closer. And from this view, so you can hopefully see my arms, so here my elbows are pointing out to the side. As I reach in towards you, my elbows point back and then come up. So repeat that a few times. Get used to getting your weight onto your hands, or at least part of your weight onto your hand. You can do a similar exercise from the squatting position. So this time, squatting with your feet parallel, toes pointing straight ahead. And this time, again, fingers perpendicular to your feet. So from the back, it'll look like this. And what I'm gonna do is lift my hips high enough. My one elbow is just behind the knee, resting against the side of the thigh. The other elbow is closer to my hip joint. So in this position, 
Again, trying to point the elbows back, looking to the right, perpendicular to my thighs. I'm gonna shift to the right, weight onto my hands. Also, I'm feeling my hip pressing into my elbows, and then back again and rest. And to get your feet off of the floor, you need to shift your weight totally onto your hands, but you also feel your leg pressing into your arms, and then you can lift the feet. So what I'd suggest, try that a few times, get used to feeling the pressure change in your hands. So as your weight goes to the side, you'll feel your, the heel of your hand pressing down more, and then as you shift even further to the side, you also feel the fingers pressing down. Have your fingers a little bit stiff so that you don't fall forward onto your face. Um, now, an option. If you can't get the elbow against your butt, um, this, uh, another option is to leave the elbow free. You could think of this as harder or easier. Um, it was just another way to experiment with the pose. So this time my back arm is free, the hip is free. And because the arm isn't supporting the butt, you're gonna to have to activate the outside of the thigh. So to activate the side of the thigh, what you could do is practice sort of like a variation of pigeon pose. In this position with the hip on the floor, press the knee down. You may feel the outer thigh activating. Press the knee down to lift the hip. And repeat that a few times. Then in this pose, in this position, you're gonna do the same thing. So as you shift to the right, press your knee into the back of your arm. Keep shifting your weight to the right. Um, that way, notice my feet are still reasonably perpendicular to my hands. This is um, just uh, talking about hand position. This is probably a bit too far from my feet. Have your hands a little bit closer to your feet so it's easier to shift your weight from your feet onto your hands. So in this position, I'm gonna lift my hips slightly, shift to the right, and here, right about here, uh, most of my weight's on my hands, but I'm gonna press my right leg down against my left elbow and then lift up. And what you could do, as in this pose, vary the amount of pressure, you can lift your hip higher or lower. And from the front, you could adjust your, the lean of your upper body to make it easier to lift the hip. Something you can play around with. But in this position, once you have your hip lifted, you can vary the downward pressure of your right thigh, lift your hip higher, or let it go lower. Like I said, that can be a little bit uncomfortable on the side of the thigh. What you may find is by squeezing the side of the thigh to, to help lift your hip higher, um, you may find a way to alleviate that discomfort. You could also try adjusting the position of your leg against your arm. Now while we're here, a logical progression from this side balance is to move into side splits. And for side splits, just remember that your bottom leg moves forward and your top leg moves back. So I'll do the same side again since I'm warmed up here. And what you can do, if you've got the flexibility, you could try placing your elbow against the arm, but you could also experiment with reaching your shoulder closer to the knee like so. It's not here, more like here. So I'm just gonna try that. And so with my arm already against my leg, then I'm gonna press my arms onto the floor and lift up. Still a bit uncomfortable on the leg. Another thing you could try, maybe try pushing your arm closer to the midsection of the thigh, like so. And then from there, top leg back, bottom leg forward. And that's the sideways flying splits. What I found just doing it there, didn't feel like my weight shifted that much as I straightened the leg. So you may find it's reasonably easy to stay balanced as you separate your legs. Easier so in this pose than in the regular Kundinyasana where the back of the leg is on the, um, where the leg is on the same side arm. So anyway, I was gonna suggest if you, for some reason you can't get your elbow past your thigh, um, what you could do, a similar variation is starting with your hands in this position. So this time my fingertips are perpendicular to my thigh. And then from this position, what you can do is you can place, hook the inside of the top knee 
onto the elbow. So same side elbow. So it's my left leg, left elbow. In regular side bakasana, your opposite knee is on the outside of the arm. So in this case, my left arm and right knee. So now I'm doing left arm, left knee. And here, what you have to do in order to lift up is use the inner thigh. So in this position in, in pigeon, I'm pressing the outside of my knee down. That activates the outer thigh to lift the hip. Um, it's a bit hard to show, but what I could do in a position like this is squeeze my legs inwards to lift the hips. Only in this position, I'm doing one leg at a time. So from here, if I lean towards the right, if I reach towards the right, notice the position my, of my shoulders relative to my hand. So here, most of my body is behind my hand, behind my desired foundation. If I reach forwards like so, notice now the position of my shoulders in front of my hands. Now I'm bringing my center of gravity, which is somewhere around here, closer to my hands. And that will make it easier to lift my, lift my body. So from here, now I'm going to press my left leg. I've lifted my left foot. Now I'm going to press my left leg down against my arm to lift my hips. This is actually a little bit harder in some ways. You may see my right shoulder is collapsing a little bit. So what I could do if I lift up, I'm trying to move this shoulder blade away from the spine. So I'm activating serratus anterior to spread my shoulder blades like so. And that might make it, if you can do that, just do an isolation where you practice spreading the shoulder blades and relaxing them, you may find that gives you a bit more stability or, or a feeling of greater strength in the pose. So anyway, from this sort of side Picasso pose, not really, again, you can lean forward and notice this time, as a variation, I've got my knees, my bottom knee between my hands. Initially, I started off like so. This position is more like side Picasso where I'm shifting um, in the same direction as my fingers. Now I'm pressing my left leg down, lifting my hips. You could also start off like this. Again, lean forward, press the left top leg down, lift the hips and try to spread. So for this arm, try to spread the shoulder blade. Why is this arm more difficult to use? There's sort of an interaction between the leg and the arm on this side. Um, this arm actually isn't that active because the leg is pressing down on the arm and this leg helps to lift this, the hip on the same side. On the other hand, this arm has to do more, more work because there's no connection between the arm and the leg. So the, actually that was a bit easier. So anyway, so in this variation, notice the foot is turned out. You could change it into Ekapada Kundinyasana by pointing the up, but that's a little bit more difficult. So this can be a cheating way to get into Ekapada Kundinyasana. And then from there you can, let me just show you that from the side. From there what you can do is dip your shoulders and in order to reach the bottom leg back, you may find that you have to reach your ribcage forwards. One of the things I rarely talk about in my videos, unless I'm doing a whole video, uh, yoga class video, is sequencing of poses. Um, one of the ways in which we used to get into side bakasana when I used to take flow classes or teach them, in general we used to do it from either um, chair pose, uh, you could do bakasana from here or turn to the side, then go into side bakasana, so chair pose, arms to the side, fingers perpendicular to the direction of my feet. I'm going to tip my weight to the right in the same direction as my toes are pointing like that. Sorry, in the same direction as my fingers are pointing like that, or with the hip on the leg like so. And here too, actually that's a little bit easier. With my hip on my leg, you can also do the flying split variation, top leg back away from the camera, bottom leg forward, both knees are straight. That is actually really easy and the reason why it's easy, the whole body is supported. 
So the right arm, the right leg, the hip and leg both rest on the elbows. So all the leg, all of the work is being done by this leg here pressing down on the elbows. So that means the arms, both arms, don't have to do that much work. So that's why this variation of side Bakasana is easier than this variation. Um, one other pose that you might be able to get into side Bakasana from is twisting side angle. So if you're in twisted side angle like this or like this, notice try and make your body, you know, rather than like this, try to create space. Move your ribs away from your pelvis. Try to press the bottom arm down against the thigh and press the top arm down against the bottom arm. Notice how that lifts the rib cage. At the same time, try and create space moving away from your pelvis. Also make your, make your neck long as well. But from here, you could bring the back leg forward, hands on the floor, knee on the, uh, knee on the elbow or hip on the elbow. Separate the legs. One final point. Get used to feeling your connection with the floor. The better you are at feeling your connection with the floor, the easier you will find it to balance in any sort of yoga pose or balancing situation. It doesn't, you don't have to visualize your center of gravity. You can just get used to feeling it by noticing pressure changes, the point of greatest pressure in your connection with the earth. So even in this pose, here I can feel my feet pressing down a little bit. And my sitting bones here, I feel my sitting bones pressing down more. So that means most of my weight is on my sitting bones. Excuse me. Even in a pose like this, Navasana, my feet are on the floor, but I can feel most of my weight is on my, all of my weight is on my sitting bones. So there I can lift the feet or put them down on the floor. And then it's just the weight of my legs, which presses my feet into the floor. So even though I haven't practiced side Bakasana, this idea of balance of being able to feel my body is what enables me to do most balance pose or a lot of balance poses relatively easily, even if I haven't practiced them because I understand or I can feel my body, I feel my connection with the earth. And I'd suggest when you're practicing um, any of these balancing poses, even while balancing on one or two legs, Focus on learning to feel your foundation. Notice the way your, the parts of your foundation press into the floor. Use that information to discern where your center of gravity is located relative to your foundation. Hope that helps. If you want more informa information, please check out my book, Balance Basics. Uh, I think I've included a link at the bottom of this video, or you can check out my website, sensationalyogaposes.com. If you have any requests, I'll do my best to do another video. Thank you very much. Namaste.